Today we're going to take a look at the case of missing Sebastian Rogers from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Yesterday I ran a spirit box session. We're going to go over that here in just a few minutes. As a lot of you guys know, when we do our spirit box sessions, ideally we like to be on location because we feel like we get a stronger signal just because we are able to pick up on that energy. Unfortunately, our schedule right now does not allow us to be down there. The remote spirit box sessions are just a session that we do here at our home base when we're unable to be on location. And typically with all of our cases with Chasing Evil, we run remote spirit box sessions. So this isn't something different for us. Let's just say hypothetically, Sebastian got up in the middle of the night and decided to leave the house. At some point, somebody would have spotted Sebastian. He has no reason to avoid the public or to hide from people. Is why hasn't nobody spotted Sebastian and it's been, what, almost a month? And everybody that knows Sebastian has said that that would be something that would be completely uncharacteristic for his behavior to just get up and wander out of the house, especially in the middle of the night. We work with law enforcement fairly closely when we work on these missing person cases. So I can pretty much guarantee right now law enforcement is probably working on the digital footprint. Does it make sense that this 15 year old autistic boy would just get up in the middle of the night and leave his house for no reason. Now, is it possible that he got up in the middle of the night, left and something bad happened? That's always possible. Is it possible that he never left the house on his own free will? That is always possible. So when we run the spirit box sessions, we try to keep an open mind. If you have theories already in your head that what may have happened to the person, as you're listening to the spirit box session, subconsciously you hear things to fit your theory. So we like to just assume that anything could have happened to the individual and just keep an open mind. Now, when we run our spirit box sessions for chasing evil, we never assume that the person is deceased. We're not necessarily trying to communicate with that person. We are really trying to communicate with any spirits that may have information as far as what happened to the individual that's missing. So let's listen to the spirit box session together. I did not put any text into anything that I thought I heard. I want you guys to leave a comment below as you listen to this, what you think that you hear, and then hopefully all of us working together can kind of piece this all together. So let's take a listen to this together and see what comes across. 15 year old Sebastian Rogers from Hendersonville, Tennessee. He went missing the night of February 25th. His mother went to wake him up for school the following morning and discovered that Sebastian was missing. Monday, February 26th, she contacted law enforcement and law enforcement had issued an endangered child alert at 11.17 that Monday morning. As far as the family could tell, Sebastian was wearing black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and his glasses. According to the family, his shoes were still inside the house and there were no signs of forced entry. A local search was done around the house about a five mile radius and they came up with no information leading to where Sebastian is. Thursday, February 29th, a local pond was drained and again, no information uh, leading to what happened to Sebastian was uncovered during that draining of the pond. Thursday, March 7th, a local landfill in White Plains, Kentucky was searched as well. Police said the landfill was searched to eliminate possible options and questions, but had no specific information leading them to that landfill. The family claims that Sebastian would never leave without his shoes and he would never wander off. We have worked on a few cases over the years that involved autistic children and they tend to be very routine so in order for Sebastian to just leave in the middle of the night, something had to trigger him to just get up and leave his house. Home security video from outside the home did show two specks of light outside the family home around 3.10 a.m. According to police, the two lights appeared to be two people with flashlights moving towards each other, and then they moved off the screen. Now, I did watch a video this morning of Sebastian's stepfather who said that he's worked closely with law enforcement and they do not believe that those are flashlights. They didn't give a reason for what the light sources are, but according to him, they do not believe that those were flashlights. So we'll keep that in mind. So as far as like right now, that's really all the information we have to go on. 
So I am going to run a remote spirit box session here in town and hopefully uncover some leads onto what may have happened to Sebastian the night he went missing. So like I said, with this spirit box session, I'm basically looking for any spirits that have any information that can come forward and provide that information with us as to what happened to Sebastian the night he went missing. So we're gonna run the spirit box session right now and just see what information we do get. Hey Siri, what is today's date? As you guys can see. Today I am running the SB7 Pro and we'll see if we can just get any spirits to come forward that may know what happened to Sebastian. So any of you guys that are familiar down with that area or who have participated in searches, if any of these, if like say a road or a landmark or comes across and that makes sense to you, please drop a comment below. If we do go down and work on this case, one, we just need the family on board to allow us to work on their child's case. And then two, we like to have locals there that can help direct us into certain locations if like names of roads or rivers or something like that comes across. So anybody local, just kind of listen and see what you pick up on. And I think, I really believe like all of us working together on social media, you know, if we set all the drama aside and just focus specifically on what happened to Sebastian, that is where our focus needs to be right now. We'll let law enforcement and all that figure out what actually happened to Sebastian. I believe in miracles and I'm going to be very positive with this. So let's jump into the spirit box session and let's see, put headphones on please. It's a lot easier to hear this with headphones. I am attempting to communicate with any spirits that may know what happened to Sebastian Rogers from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Can you hear me, yes or no? Can you tell me, is Sebastian alive? Okay. If Sebastian was hurt, can you tell me what he is near? Okay. Is Sebastian still near his home? Did Sebastian leave the house on his own free will that night? Did somebody hurt Sebastian the night he went missing? Have anything to do with this? <laughs> now, right there, my audio, and I just put new batteries in the mic before I started filming this, and the batteries were completely dead just minutes into this, which is the first strange thing that happened. Sorry, my audio went out. Is Sebastian in water? If you can see where Sebastian is, can you tell me what he's near? I will say there was a few times during this session I thought I heard bathtub. And a lot of this stuff, like with uh, the Delphi case, a lot of the stuff that we that came across really didn't make sense at the time. But as law enforcement released, started to release information, then everything started to make sense, which is probably going to be the same case here. 
but there's a couple times I distinctly remember running the session. I thought I heard bathtub. So I'm just curious if, you know, if there was an accident or something did happen. Hold on guys, I'm gonna have to change these batteries out real quick. Can you tell me what Sebastian is near? If Sebastian was hurt, can you tell me how Sebastian was hurt? Jesus. That freaking thing just fell. Okay, that was creepy. I had this thing blocking some of the light coming through here. It's been sitting up there for at least an hour. If somebody hurt Sebastian, can you give me the name of the person that hurt Sebastian? I need to know, is Sebastian Rogers from Hendersonville, Tennessee still alive? Is Sebastian still in Tennessee? Can you see what is near Sebastian? If he is in the water, do you know the name? of the waterway. Why did Sebastian leave the house? There's definitely a female coming across. It sounded like a couple times hands came across, so I don't know what the significance of that is. And that's when we run these sessions, that's stuff that we look for is things that are more repetitive, because obviously you get random things that come across, but things that continuously repeat themselves are things that we tend to key in on. Did you see who hurt Sebastian? Was this an accident? Is Sebastian in a wooded area? How was Sebastian hurt? I don't want to guess on what's coming across, but there's definitely some very specific things coming across. Is there a road that's near Sebastian? What is the name of the road? Can you tell me what town he is near? What did Sebastian have with him when he left the house? If Sebastian left the house by himself, can you tell me which direction he went? How was Sebastian hurt? Stop. 
I need to know what is Sebastian near right now, if you can see him. I want to say thank you to the spirits who communicated with me today. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to go over all this information and see what may have came across. There were some things that I thought I heard, but I don't want to speculate on what may have came across. When we run the spirit box sessions, anything that we feel may be detrimental to the case, we're going to leave out for now. A lot of times you really won't know what makes sense when it comes across until law enforcement releases more information. So yeah, I don't know. We'll go over this stuff. Like I said, hopefully we got some good information and everybody just say a prayer for Sebastian and his family. And hopefully we got some good stuff across this and we'll see. Anytime you work on a missing person case, you always wanna be respectful of the family, the victims. So I always say until you have 100% proof that something bad happened and they're no longer with us, always keep hope and just keep praying because, you know, people have been missing for years and suddenly reappeared. Figure out what happened to Sebastian. That's the main goal. So our prayers go out to Sebastian, wherever you are. We're just praying for you.